Hi everybody, welcome back to Aspects and Phases uh, teaching. Um, and in today we're doing part two. So I really hope that you enjoyed uh, part one and it gave you some awareness about what this is about. So in today's video, um, we're gonna be learning about what are planetary pairs? How do they help us understand individual contexts in our personal lives? And I'm gonna give you an example of planetary pairs and phase relationship between two planetary pairs. And this is very important because Number one, or should I say part one, is very much about here's this, this concept, but how does it practically look in the chart? So that's why it's very important to watch this video series a couple of times and really digest it in that sense. And if you're looking for me to actually, you know, apply this to your own personal chart, then you can always book a session with myself or actually study the astrology schools with me, okay? All right, so let's get into this for us today. Uh, let's press that button. Okay, so what are planetary pairs? Planetary pairs simply identifies that when we are looking at the development of life, there are certain aspects of the development that go together. Okay, so in this example here, I've got the sun and the moon. In other words, the planetary pair relationship between the sun and the moon in an astrology chart reflects how you as a human being creatively actualizes yourself and how does that sense of identity that you have connect with that, okay? So we all have a sense of identity, the moon, and we all have a creative purpose. And the phasal relationship between these two planets will tell you if you're able to do this in a very harmonic way, or if there's a lot of tension, or if there's a development stage, and so on and so forth. So part of learning about planetary, uh, about aspects and phases is understanding that planets have relationships to themselves, and that those planets reflect development aspects of who we are. So the same with um, Mars and Venus as an example. Mars reflects the way that we initiate our desires. Venus reflects the way that we um, not only develop our relationship to ourselves on, on, a, on a, like what are our needs, but it also correlates to how we actually develop relationships with other people. Now, if your Mars and Venus is in opposition with each other, how do you think this is gonna play out from the context of planetary pairs? How do you think your relationships are going to play? How do you feel you're going to operate in relationships? So what planetary pairs does is it says there are certain planetary pairs that exist, Saturn, Moon, Jupiter, Mercury, Uranus, uh, Mercury, Neptune, Venus, as an example. And all of those planetary pairs will, and Mars, Pluto will tell you how, you're actually how your soul is developing itself and how the creative process is, is existing for you individually. And I, I like that about Jeffrey Wolf Green because he was like, look, when you take a cookbook astrology and you say, okay, this person has, like we've all done this, right? You looked up your sun sign, you looked up your moon sign and you went, okay, I'm a Scorpio. So these are my personalities, traits. And my moon's in Gemini, so this is how I am. And we go around kind of identifying ourselves through that process. But I'm telling you now that when you meet somebody that's got a moon in Scorpio, sorry, a, a sun in Scorpio, moon in Gemini, where those two are in opposition to each other versus somebody that's got a new phase conjunction, those cookbook astrology experiences are not going to reflect the same dynamic because not only are we forgetting, forgetting about the individual context, we're also not even identifying how that's actually specific for you. Somebody that's got an opposition versus a new phase fundamentally needs to live their life very differently. So when you understand that intimate part of your charts, then what you're doing is you're actually living in a way that is correct for you versus, for instance, what the um, sort of generalized information is about. So planetary pairs are very important. It reflects to us the relationship that two planets have and how that influences the creative process and then what phase of relationships are about. Okay, so how do they help us understand individual context in our personal lives? Well, this picture really reflects to me the essence of what I'm trying to share here. Everything has a cycle. Life is a consistent process of cycles upon cycles upon cycles. And so these cycles reflect to us where we are individually, like I mentioned in the first um, video and like I mentioned with planetary pairs. So the way that we understand individual context is like I've said before, if somebody has a moon in Gemini and their sun signs in Scorpio, now that will create a natural inconjunct. Okay, that, that process for them, that what's individual for them is that they will have certain experiences within their life that will feel as if their sense of self and their sense of creative process can't be seen. They can't see it. 
And yet they have these experiences that form crises that develop deep psychological and emotional patterns in their life that go, ah, is this what this is about? If you had somebody that had a phasal relationship between, um, you know, the sun and, and, um, moon again, but it was balsamic. In other words, they were just about to complete the whole entire evolutionary cycle. Then what you're dealing with is this picture over here. You're dealing with the whole entire evolutionary cycle. And say somebody that had that, that same example that I gave right in the beginning with, with uh, the sun and, and moon in a quincunx, you're actually dealing with the life cycle that's over here. This person requires an immense amount of nurture. This person is actually here to fulfill the creative potential and purpose through exploration and deep wisdom. There are fundamental different processes here. And so this is honoring life and this context of life cycles and a context of, of um, evolutionary uh, dynamics. So everything's individual. So how do we understand planetary pairs within this context? And I've got a, a, an animated uh, video here, so I hope that this works. Let's see if that shows up. Let's, uh, let's get it over there. There we go. Okay. So now you can see that on the screen. Can you see that I have the sun over there and I have the moon there? Okay. Now this is how phasal relationships work. I want everybody to focus on the sun as a focus point, And I want you to watch the moon move across the chart. Watch this. Okay. Can you see how there now it's forming a trine? Now it's going to move. It's going to move. And then there's a square and then eventually there's going to be a sextile in that case. And this is balsamic. Look how they're coming close together. That process is called balsamic. It's a completion cycle, just as the new and full moon. No different, right? So again, there is a conjunction that took place between the moon and, and the sun. In other words, they, they completed and now they formed a new evolutionary cycle. And so the moon is now creating a new evolutionary cycle. And it goes across and it goes across and it goes across. Can you see? There's the first quarter square. There's the trine. There's the M conjunct and the opposition. And eventually we go around the chart again. You just apply that to same to to chart to to um, planets. Like in the previous video, I talked about uh, Jupiter and um, Venus. As well. No, it wasn't Venus. I can't remember <laughs> what it was. But anyway, the point was that we used we used the symbol there. And we had another symbol. So let's just say, let's just take Jupiter and Mercury, right? Jupiter is your focus point. Mercury is moving around the chart. Just pretend that the moon is Mercury and just pretend that the sun is, is Jupiter. The same concept applies. Cycles. Can you see it? Just cycles and the development phase that is necessarily occurring. Does that make sense? Okay. So that is the example of a planetary pair and phasal relationship. The phasal relationship, the planetary pair is sun, moon, credit self-actualization, that's a trine. So within the context of this person's life, if this was when this person was born right now, they would have a trine between these two. A lot of fluidity, a lot of um, developmental phase. They're in a point in their life in which they have a lot of like feelings of, yeah, I can do this. This is my personality. Whereas if you met somebody that had the, the in conjunct that you see right now, they're going to be fundamentally and psychologically paralyzed with their sense of self-identity because the in conjunct is a, par a paralysis energy. Okay, it creates a deep internal dialogue with self. They're going to be more introverted than the person that had the, the trine. You understand? Okay. All right, guys. So I hope that that gave you a deeper, again, a deeper understanding of what we're dealing with over here. Um, as I said before, this is what I teach in my astrology schools. Um, and if you want me to actually work with your charts and professionally analyze it for yourself and help you digest this for your own personal stuff, then, you know, just write me up. Uh, all the all the links to how to connect with me are in the description in the comments below. And I also encourage you to write in the comments below. Interact with me in the videos, okay? All right, so everybody, have a fantastic day and I'll speak to you soon. Don't forget part three is coming up really shortly. Bye.